While you guys were out doing the uh, the gallery walk, uh, we placed some surveys, just a short survey for you there that we'd like for you to look at and complete. You can give that to me or to Judy or to Jean, or if you want, uh, leave it at the edge of the tables uh, so that we can pick it up. Uh, and ask that you uh, just give us your honest opinion on, on those questions. Uh, this is an opportunity for us to review that and then, you know, for me to then follow up with you. One thing I would add to that that is not on there is if you saw a partner out there during the gallery walk that you believe is one that would be beneficial in helping you, you know, advance, you know, an initiative that you're currently working on, put, put their name on there. That way I can kind of start looking at those kind of things. So just add that and you can put that in the comment section if you'd like. Oh, okay. But if you forgot to do that, just add it to the evaluation. <laughs> what I'd like to do now, I guess, is if we're ready, is uh, bring up. Uh, mm, check. Is I want to bring Alma and Elizabeth back up. Alma from Educate Texas and Elizabeth from TG. Good morning, everyone. Thanks again for being here. What a great opportunity. I can see some smiling faces. There was a little, um, uh, when I used to be a kindergarten teacher, the students would tell me that they were bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. I never understood that. I saw a lot of bright eyes today, so that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, yeah, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. I never, well, anyway, but yeah, we're, we all have bright eyes today. Thank you so much. I don't see too many new faces per se in the audience, but just as a reminder, my name is Alma Garcia. I'm a program officer for Educate Texas, and this morning we have Elizabeth Stanley, also from uh, TG from Texas Grant, that's going to be uh, leading off this uh, part or this section of the um, of the presentation today. And let me tell you a little bit about what we're going to do this morning. You know, yesterday we talked a little bit about uh, a, a little bit about a lot. You know, the good thing about it is at the beginning it was very, very broad. Then we had some conversations that started kind of bringing it together. So today we're really going to go a little bit deeper into the work that we're doing. But I wanted to share a couple of things with you. And it, like I said, we do have some new members in our audience today. And it's kind of recapping a little bit about what we did yesterday. So if you could look up here real quickly, we talked about San Antonio 2020 goals. We talk about this ambitious opportunity now where the, we have a champion of this work. Mayor Castro is bringing together a lot of partners, people of, of influence, people of authority to really start talking to practitioners that are in our school communities to start talking about how do we make sure that as part of the goals that 50% of the adults in San Antonio have a two to four year degree. 80% of the high school graduates enroll in a two, four year or technical college. And the last one, 80%, 85% of students demonstrate some college readiness. Yesterday's part of this discussion, we started talking again, what does college ready mean? How do you build a culture? How do you flip the culture of a campus? Who are the people that are gonna help us do this? And mostly we also talked about resources. We talked about challenges and obstacles and how some of you are already addressing that. Then we have the Diplomas Project, unites 16 cross-sector partners to integrate existing programs. And I think the magic word is partnerships. And the last word here is systemic approach. When you have a systemic approach, that means that you're not trying to fix or, or fix or improve a small section of education. You're really trying to transform the way we think, to transform the way we do things, to, to make sure that systemically we're making a change in our school communities. A very ambitious goal of 9% increase in college completion by Latinos in 2015 in support of the 2020 goals. I'd like to point this word out, Latinos. 
We're really focusing in on a special population of students that are Latino, Hispanic background. The numbers, the data, everything indicates that we have to be very deliberate. We have to be very focused in making sure that the Latino, Hispanic population in our school communities are being targeted. Again, in alignment with the goals, number one, that we graduate them college ready. Number two, that we have access opportunities and persistence while they're in a two, four year or technical college. And then the last one, of course, is complete. And yesterday, just as part of our conversation, it's not about just completing a degree, but it's completing a degree that has value. How many of you have read in the newspaper, in our articles, magazines, heard it on TV, that right now there's a certain amount of graduates that have a degree, but they can't find a job? So again, it's more about the alignment of the work that we do in our school communities to make sure that we are advising and informing our students, their parents, anyone that can, that can really give good advice and recommendations, that they understand the job value and also the job market that's out there so they can align their career pathways. So let's review real quickly, and this will kind of bring us up to speed. In order for us to get to the future, we have to talk about what we've done in the past. And let's talk about immediate past. We had Sonia Rodriguez, the Tri-Chair and County Board member, with a message that's going to inspire our work, encourage us that we embrace. Look at that word, collective attitude towards meeting these goals. We had Jorge Lizondo, again, on the <coughs> private side. He's the VP for Customer <coughs> Insights at HEB, saying that data is going to play a very important work in the pathway through logical steps. What drives our collective action plan? The numbers, the data. And you know what? Data is what it is. Depends on where you get it. Depends who's telling it. We've learned through our collective work that the data is what it is. However, there are trust uh, sources that we can trust, sources that have that common language that we use. And again, we are going to start thinking collectively, how are we going to be using that data? We had superintendents or their designees from the four uh, school districts that are represented here today, Northside, Southwest, Harlandale, and San Antonio, and we had a share out. We t you talked about your data. You established an argument that each of you understand your data, and in order to uh, achieve or to design clear, measurable goals, you had to identify areas of challenge, and then again, to start talking about that momentum to build on it. None of you are here today saying, today we're gonna start from the beginning. <laughs> on the contrary, <laughs> you're saying, you know what, I just found out that that school district's way ahead in some areas, but then again, there's a lot of opportunities for sharing and for learning. We had Greg come up here several times today and not only talk about what's happening in Texas, because uh, I think Greg's also validating the work that we're doing, but he's also shared stories where he's traveled to different states. He's talked to the champions of the work that we're doing. So I think if anything else, Greg's message to us was that he understands that San Antonio can and will be and is in the national context kind of leading a lot of this collective work that we're doing. We have someone at the national level that's coming in to validate our work. And right now, the messaging is that if we continue to work harder, deeper, and together, that San Antonio can serve as a national model where people will be knocking on our doors, trying to emulate, trying to scale up, and if anything else, trying to really, really go deeper by bringing not only philanthropic foundations to the work that we're doing and saying, you know what? We believe in what you're doing, We've got a national validation. We got state validation. What is it that we can do to help you? So Greg, for that, we thank you for being here to kind of showcase everything that we're doing. But at the same time, we're, we are hoping that we've inspired you enough for you to go back at the national level to say, you know what? It's not about somebody telling us. We saw it in action and we have that commitment. So there was a couple of activities that we did. We, had, we did a framework activity, understanding some philosophic approaches and possible intersections. And again, intersections means focus and intentional. We used a framework template to identify strategies, to modify them, to improve them, that will now, if you notice, we're coming to that end, that starts talking about how are we going to have the greatest benefits from these activities that we're doing. 
We had a team breakout. We used the Lumina template, again, to complete key areas of focus, metrics, strategies, and timelines. And look, we pushed you to stretch your goals in order to begin conversations around transformation. You know what, ladies and gentlemen, you've done a lot. I just got tired telling you what y'all did yesterday. <laughs> but I just wanted again to show that this is not an easy process. What you all have done in a day and a half usually takes weeks and weeks just of thinking. I'm not telling you that what you did to yesterday and today is not a kind of an accumulation of weeks and months and, and uh, of you all coming together to think about what you're doing because you brought tools with you. You brought data templates, you brought your campus goals, you brought together some of the reflections of what is going on in your campuses, you shared not only the best practices but proven practices. We also had interactive sharing and learning and the evidence is still up on the wall. You all broke up into groups, you talked about what are some important goals that are in, in collaboration and alignment with the work that you're doing, but you also started talking about strategies. And guess what? Not only the strategies, but how are you going to measure impact? And how are you going to tell everyone, everyone in your school communities, this is why we stand on this. And this is how we're going to measure it. This morning, Jacob shared a, 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 a pamphlet with us, a, a, a white paper of sorts. Well, not really. It's just the, the outcomes of the FAFSA and some of the other information. We have to develop similar publications to validate the work that we're doing. Look at the word right here, cross-district discussions. We broke up by role alikes, counselors, administrators, data uh, uh, analysts, <coughs> people that do research and data collections, and we also had our, our uh, curriculum and instruction folks meet together. But the good thing about it is that four of you met to talk about collectively what are we going to do together. So now the results are in. All of that work that we've done. There's a handout that we have that you have right before you. And I wanted to show you a couple of things. I wanted to tell you that if we looked around, Elizabeth and I, Jacob and, and uh, Gina, we got together and we put the results of the final uh, accumulation of all of our collective thinking yesterday. We have goals. We have metrics and we have strategies. And here are the votes on each. Yesterday, if you noticed that we did have an opportunity to start talking about can we have a goal without a strategy? Can we have a strategy without a goal? How are we going to put this together? But I'll tell you one thing right now. This is the beginning discussions of how we're going to be going a little bit deeper into the work that we're doing. This is something that we're going to make, and, and, I, and I borrowed this, I'm gonna borrow this from from Patrick because I stole it from him, but this is La Promesa. This is the promise that we're going to be making each other in regards to what we're going to be working together. So let's look at this real quickly. These are the high votes. And by the way, that three goes right in here. That's why it's in your, in your handout. But if you notice that some of the biggest goals, and I put down the goals that have the most votes, and I'll show you in just a little bit. Improve student success on AP assessment, increase rigor, Improve college readiness by integrating, and I'm, this is the word that I misspelled, that's academic. I spelled it uh, phonetically, and I was supposed to fix it right now, but I just thought I'd wake you up a little bit. The <laughs> academic readiness and college knowledge. We've got the create post-secondary readiness student profile. Increased percent of students completed a coherent sequence of, of uh, CTE courses and creating a college and career going culture, and that got a lot of votes. Increasing taking and passing the Texas Success Initiative or any college readiness exam, again, that's an important. So I wanted to go back real quickly and talk to you about the results. Well, this is what we did. We put all of the goals together. We put all of the strategies together. We talked a little bit about the metrics and how we're going to validate and measure the importance and impact, because remember, if you, don't, if you can't measure it or you don't have evidence of it, then really it's just more fluff. We're talking about it. So we're going to talk a little bit about the final cross-district projects that connect the key priorities for all the districts. Now we're all coming together with that promesa, <coughs> right? All right. So far, any questions, any comments about the process, how we brought it together, 
how you all, this is representative of everything we talked yesterday. All right. So this is where I'm going to allow Elizabeth to come up here with arm wrestled, and she's the winner, to walk us through the next activity in regards to the final results. Great, thank you. So as we look at this slide, what we did was look at the goal that scored the highest point combined with the strategy that scored the highest points. You'll find that as you disaggregate all that, there are certain strategies and a particular goal that had the highest points of all, not necessarily all connected. And so when you look at the highest scored goal and the highest scored strategy, you have what we show here. Improve student success on AP assessment, with the strategy being to improve the an analytical and writing um, through teacher training, vertical alignment, um, appropriate student expectations, I would imagine practice, et cetera. And also the question of rigor. And so with this training, um, more professional development, implementation of pre-AP in middle and high schools. Um, and so I think that you could look at these individually or you can kind of blend them. It's gonna be up to you because what we're gonna do in just a short while is have you guys get back together in your district teams. Is it district teams? Okay. And we want you to look at um, ways that we can move forward, ways that we can begin um, making these next steps. But when we go to the next slide, these are the, the goals broken out. Um, these were the top, how did you organize it? The top three? Mm -hmm. All okay. these goals got the highest points. Oh, I'm sorry. All of these goals got the highest points, but you notice it's, got, it's a goal. It doesn't have the strategy underneath. So in other words, the strategies that were introduced, the strategies that were introduced said, you know what, those were not the right strategies. We need to go back and really go a little bit deeper. We have to, you know, if you go back, we talked about it, we went round robin, we did the carousel activities, and we said, you know, while the, we need to create a post-secondary readiness student profile, what we need to talk about is how do we really get into a deeper strategy on how we're gonna do that. So today, really, what we're talking about right now is what we collectively thought was very important, but we still have the next step of really identifying what is the strategy to get us there. Thank you. All right. And so, what I do want to point your attention to, when you look at the highest scored goal of all of them, you know, there were a lot more goals that received threes um, because there were fewer places to put your dots, but the highest scored goal was creating a culture of college going, creating a culture, a college and career going culture, excuse me. The highest was creating a college and career going culture. And so I um, am here, and in my role as I work with higher ed institutions, I like to challenge because we all feel very comfortable with what we're doing, and you guys are doing wonderful things. I've learned an amazing amount. Um, but I would say that beyond getting the college and career culture, we're looking at completion and then the success that comes after that. We're wanting the successful contributing lifestyles. And so there's some things that you guys came up with that I think would be very helpful in doing this, but I'm gonna spin it just a little bit because my perspective is somewhat different, not coming from secondary education and not working with you that often. Um, and looking at the highest scored strategies, there were two in particular. The first, uh, one of the first, um, is Harlandale ISD, and that's train teachers at middle school on rigor and readiness, um, implementing AP strategies in middle schools and high schools. That was one of the one of the two strategies that were the highest scored, and then the second highest scored, or the second first, if you will, um, was from Northside, and that's infused career investigation and exploration into middle school ELA curriculum. Um, especially in considering the requirement for increased nonfiction reading. Now, that particular goal only received two points, but the strategy in and of itself received four. And so we had a, the discussion, can you have a strategy devoid of the goal? And actually you could, because there's a lot of um, agreement here, and I'm curious um, how the strategy could become so highly scored, but the goal is not. 
that might be something that you all want to talk about in your in your in your groups or if you decide to convene in some different way. Um, but is it that you all are not having the same challenge maybe that we see in Northside ISD with students completing the 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 coherent sequence? Um, and if you are, then maybe we can discuss how you're having the success and maybe they're they're not as successful in that arena or maybe you just hadn't noticed that there was an issue. I don't know what it is. But when we were talking yesterday, um, I have the counselors, and I'm going to tell off on you guys just a little bit, because we were talking about ways that we could come together collectively um, in their function and look at ways that they can contribute to the overall goal. And of, of course, there's always a discussion about constraints with all the responsibility and the ridiculously high student counselor ratios and all the things that we know so much about. And that really is a, a concern. Beyond that, there was this discussion that, well, when it comes to issues that are CNI, that's not our function. We don't have anything to do with that. And my challenge to them was, yes, you actually do. You're not the ones who are developing curriculum. You don't, you know, determine pedagogy or approach. But what do you know about emotional intelligence or engaging or relating to students that you could be supportive in really undergirding your curriculum and instruction? There are ways that everyone in this room, regardless of where you sit, contribute to the other's role and the overall function. And so beyond you guys getting together in your districts or even across districts in your individual groups, because I understand that you have a really well-oiled machine, um, how often do you talk across your little silos? You know, and, and looking at the way that you really blend, not just looking at your strict function as, as it's written on paper, but how, do your, how does your knowledge or your understanding and your interactions with students inform someone else to help the faculty who may be a content expert but has the worst ability to relate or cannot relate to students, how do you help them become a better, a better teacher? How do you really create the, the atmosphere that will help cultivate this culture that we talk so much about? So what we want you to do in the next slide, I guess we need to progress this a little bit. We want you to get together in your small groups. And so let's take a, a quick vote because we could do it as we've done and, and have the districts get together and talk. But since we're looking to co collaborate across districts, it almost makes more sense to me if we would organize in some different fashion and not so much putting all you together by your group, but maybe just counting off into four different groups and bringing blended roles and blended districts together. Um, so if you guys want to get together as your district, um, I want you to raise your hand or uh, when I ask. And then the other option is if you want to do a blended group discussion. And so all those for district, let's see. Elizabeth, yes. So let me tell you, because I guess you would want to know what you're going to be tasked with doing, right? That just you know, makes sense. Um, so in your small groups, we want you to reflect back on everything that you've come up with that you see on the walls and looking at the, the goals and looking at the strategies and looking at the summary that we've given you, what scored what, and what you all have collectively determined to be your priority. How can you all get together to come up with ways that you can work together across districts to impl implement something that would be consistent, um, implement something that would look the same and would be measured in the exact same way so that collectively, as four districts, you all begin to model how, how your collaboration can propel this, this desire of this culture that we want to create and can also enable your student success. We want you to look at um, the, the results that have been validated. We've heard all, the, all about that from Alma. We want you to look at ways that we can accomplish the goal or a set strategy um, quickly. And so we can always overanalyze something to death. We can have a committee that can convene for the next two years to talk about one strategy that's on the wall. But we want you to move to action. So not something that's so complicated and so burdensome that it's going to require 10 additional hours you know, of you every week, um, but something that's really manageable, something that you can commit to, and that you will actually begin taking the steps, even if you break it down into segments, you know, this is phase one, phase two, this is what the full, you know, project will look like or the full initiative will look like, but what can you get together and agree, this is the strategy that we've all c agreed with, this is what, this is how we're going to make it happen, and this is how we're going to move quickly. 
We don't have years to get this going. We need to do it starting today. When you leave, we want you thinking about the whole point of your two days here, how you can move from you know, discussion, contemplation, to action, implementation. Um, how are you going to collaborate? What is that going to look like? Who's going to get together? How are you going to communicate across silos, across districts, um, and what your plan is? And so that's, you know, in what, how many minutes do we have? In the next 20 minutes. <laughs> that's, and so again, this is only the first discussion. So those of you who are looking at me like, you have got to be joking, I know. It's a lot to ask, but I want you thinking about it because this is serious. So this is the first discussion. We don't expect you to have a fully fleshed out plan, but we want, to, we want you to walk away with ideas that you've come up with that you think, okay, this is a way that we can begin getting there. This is a building block. And then, of course, there's going to be the follow-up to make sure that you guys are convening and, and, and getting everything in place that you need. Yes. Yes. That's, that was my thought. <laughs> yes, I agree. Jean? I would say either a strategy or a goal, because if you when you look when you combine the the goal and the strategy, then we have a different list. We have a different ranking. When you look at the top ranked goal and the top ranked strategy, there are only three, and so there's one goal that's received a four. There are two strategies that received a four, and so. No. Yeah. Right. You can come up with um, ways for influencing um, and, and, right. and sharing and ways of gaining momentum towards this cause. Right. And so there, you know, you don't have the authority, of course, to go and change policy and all. I get that. I fully understand that. But you all are brilliant and you understand from your individual areas how you can blend your energies to, I mean, to really develop some synergy. And so let's look at what we can accomplish. And even if it's coming up with a plan of how you're going to begin influencing people over to this, this whole concept of collaborative effort, collective. Um, That's when Mayor Castro can do his influence. <laughs> <laughs> so let, let, let's look at it in another lens, all right? Right now, we're not going to really agree on, on um, in other words, we're not going to go leave the room right now and say, this is it, we're, we're done. Now, remember, Patrick's uh, program, the diplomas, that's part of his follow-up. That's part of him convening us all over again, per se, and I say it, to take us to the next steps. What is it that we're going to do? Three things that we know for sure, for sure, based on the goals of 2020, for sure. We know that we have to graduate more students college ready. We know that we need to have give them access and persistence once they go to college, and then we want to make sure that they complete a degree with a market value. That's it. We know that. That is it. That we start in kindergarten, that we have to have wonderful readers, that we have to get them through AP. Those are strategies in themselves. The major goals is to make sure that these students have everything possible for them to be successful once they graduate from not only high school, but from, from college. So in essence, right now, going back, how do we get to the end, which is complete, a, a, a graduate with a, a market value degree? So today, what we're going to be talking about are some of those things. We're going to validate what we talked about. 
we're not making those big deep decisions because I don't think we have the people of authority in the in the audience today to say we're going to go back and you know what revamp our whole AP program we're going to add more courses because that's something that you're going to go back based on your data that you brought if you notice the data across all of your four school districts is completely different on the same thing so again, the follow-up is now to bring you back together a lot deeper with a strategy. Today was, all these last two days, was for us to start thinking, what is the final thing that we want to accomplish? What you're going to do today is, again, you had time to go back home, relax. You're bringing back, remember, the bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. You're going to look at what's up on the wall. You've got the results in front of you. You're going to say, you know what? What were we thinking yesterday when we talked about that? Number two, what's a quick win? Can we go back right now and say, petition our school districts? A common testing calendar. Is that something that all four of us can do tomorrow and tell our superintendents, our board members, you know what? What does it have to do collectively? We've got four school districts. They're going to push that the, all of the ACTs, SATs be done during a school day at our campus. That's a quick win. Did you have to think about it? Did you have to go back? You talk about the obstacles, what does it cost? Things like that. But you see, those are the quick wins that we're talking about. Miguel? I guess my question is, <coughs> if, if we did it the way I'm thinking you're saying it, we get back in whatever team we get into, and we're gonna look at everything that we created like yesterday, and we're gonna come back up again with another goal. I think that yeah. us redoing the whole process, <coughs> should we just focus on these goals here that you put in the last slide and think which one but what I'm trying to tell you is with the end in mind of the 2020 goals that is your focus all right but the answer is yes now let's look at the last one develop your identify your, your collaborate so you're in a cross-section right now you got four different people so start talking about so uh, do we need a calendar How, when are we going to meet the Diplomas Project is what we call kind of the, along with the educational partnerships, your backbone. They're the people that are going to come and bring you together, bring you the resources, the partners to talk to. How do you convene? Who's going to follow through? Okay, Alma. So, are there any other questions? Because we're wasting time. Let's count. We're going to do four groups, and we're going to start. Those of you who are working in the IMC, one, two, three, four. It's simple. We're starting right here. So those of you who want to stay in district, raise your hand. Those of you who want to blend, raise your hand. Okay, so it looks like we're going to stay in district. And how do we come up in connectivity with what we're going to announce at our yeah. district conference? That's, yeah. a great, that's a great question. I think they have to be. In those notes, on those papers, it will have a four next to it. And so on page, on page one, the strategy, the first strategy with the most votes is the second Harlingdale ISD strategy number two. And then on page two, Northside ISD, the second strategy with four votes is and go to strategy one, and you're just looking at your strategy. And then the goal that has the highest votes is on page three. Oh, just, just you guys, let me, let me, let me bring it back. We're not, you're not abandoning your goals and your strategies or not. What we need to do collectively as four school districts is come up with one or two goals that together we're gonna work towards collectively as the four school districts on the diploma that's it. You're not abandoning anything. We're not asking you to do anything different. Is it from the votes we had? There obviously was at least one trend. Maybe I know Roxanne and I talked last night about that one. <coughs> what does that one really mean? Uh, maybe that's a discussion we have to have for the next 15 minutes. It's just, it's just that. How, you know, what does that really mean? How is each district maybe going to carry it out? That's a big goal. We're not asking anybody to abandon your own. This work is still yours.
15 minutes, how are we going to accomplish that? Well, yeah. that's, that's our, that's our concern. So, so you did reach consensus, but there was overwhelmingly the one yeah. that got voted out. Yeah. Isn't that yeah, our goal that right there of, of the, the Pool of Moss anyway, is to create a college in Pueblo Hills? That's, that's the ultimate goal. goal, and that was that's your right. number one goal. That is so there's your goal. goal. Right. And your couple of strategies can be, well, we're going to start infusing recruit investigation in middle school, and we're going to increase and that's training all we to do to do to And those are your strategies. Yeah. And on top of that, all you're doing, all you're doing right now is you're identifying ways that you're going to collaborate and you're identifying a plan for communicating. And so you're going to identify these elements, you're not going to write a dissertation, and with the time that you have, this can begin in conversation. It will continue, I promise. Was there a hand over here? Yes. Yes. I had a question. Would you elaborate on the metric? Is how firm is that 85%? This is not to, uh, to flush out the metric. We're not doing that right now. Okay. We're looking at I'm what it is. Now. I'm just asking how firm is it? So I don't think anything is firm. So are you claiming 85%? Yes. 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 Oh. Are you saying on this side? For essay 2020, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. It, is, it is very evident that this needs follow up. Yeah. So we agree yeah. that, all right? Yeah. All right, so today, this is your task for today with the understanding that we have a, an individual organization that's gonna follow up with you. The people, your your superintendents, whoever needs to be there to validate it, I mean, give it the real challenges, the funding, the time, the resources, everything will be at the table to make those decisions. What those superintendents and your superintendents need to know is that there was some input, there was some discussion, there was some agreement, there was some voting, there was people coming in and having these conversations, there was confusion, there was a light at the end of the tunnel. But right now, what we need to do, it's not, we're not gonna leave that room, Jean, it's impossible with, this is the compact. It's going to be, this is the commitment we have and this is what we're gonna be doing. The other, there were two strategies that scored four. One of them had to do with CTE and embedding the career exploration and investigation in um, curriculum, looking at the, the requirement for increased nonfiction writing. And so I had to explain that, and I, I think they have slightly influenced your decision because I was so impassioned by the idea. But let me tell you what I saw when I, when I heard about that. I see that you have this curriculum that's reaching students at a very early age, at age appropriate, but it's beginning to show them what life could look like as far as what I can be, what I can become. Maybe they don't have those examples or those role models that are in, in their immediate life experience when they walk out of those doors, but they, they are beginning to see 
what the whole point of an education is, and are beginning to understand how their life could be different from their parents. But in addition to that, you know, and the, you know, when you have a goal in mind, then you work harder, you're more engaged in your academics, it, it, there's a point to it. But it also begins to instill a, a culture of persistence and completion in their mind because they have something that they're working toward. They're making a commitment and they are moving forward. And so that actually accomplishes the academic you know, desire that looks at the, the cultural, the thinking. So we, these, these are all accomplishing the overarching goal. Yeah. But I still wanted to hear what yeah. I wanted Roseanne to say, because I think you're going down a road where I was thinking we might go. Well, for example, today, Jeff um, talked to us about the tool for uh, a profile planning guide. So could we all commit that, you know, hey, we'd like to do that at each of our school. Is that only a high school tool or a middle, high, any school, Pedro, right? Pedro. So. You know, that would be a great starting point because it, it kind of goes with, uh, somebody said, a student career profile or college ready student profile. So first we gotta get the school ready, I feel like. And then, so we can do that. And then our communication piece was about really teachers as college access professionals. You know, teachers are your first line of defense for kids. So. What kind of knowledge do teachers need to know at every level, at elementary, middle, and high, so that if a student asks them a question about, you know, college or careers, what is it? What are some basic facts that every single teacher needs to know? And we could come up with those by a level. And what kinds of things do we want in every single teacher's classroom? Um, you know, those would be like, fast, doable things um, that could make a difference. difference. One by one, though, what, what I wondered was, I, I, I know we voted, and I, I don't want to dishonor that, but it seems, it seems like we're splitting hairs about that. If there were some strategies that were worthy and they got votes, I wonder about, because what we've talked about is that big abstract, and we have that metric. We can list them in order to honor voting, but I think anything that got at least a couple of votes meant somebody's thinking about doing that. And, and that's all we have to put in there. We, this group can talk about that later, about how we do that to flesh out the ideas as you're going through, Roseanne. Mm -hmm. But do you think, I mean, if, I don't know, I just kind of worry, if we put up rigor, yeah. right. is yeah. that how, But that was a goal, that wasn't that. a strategy, right? That was a goal. See, I what happened, I think, I think the reason we're having this conversation is because the goals that came out the highest the strategies under those goals right. did not. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I, I agree with Miguel because I, I think we can reframe some of those strategies right. that you pointed out right. and make them really be support strategies right. under the big goal that right. obviously all of us agreed on the goal is all we want. So I really think we shouldn't mm -hmm. deviate from some of what you've been saying. And I think it's so important, you guys, to think about this strategy as a menu of strategies. Mm -hmm. If right. it would be great is if, if there were one or two strategies that everyone could at least say, I'm going to really look at whether this will work for my district and I'm going to report back, right? Because there were some strategies that emerged. But what if we think about, this is the, this is the goal that everyone agreed on. And we've already set the metric, essentially, so now we're going to have to look at how each of our districts is doing annually to kind of get lined up with that metric. And then what are the strategies, that all the strategies that we think are valuable and worth pursuing, but then what are the one or two or three that we collectively at least are going to go see if they might work for our districts and then come back as a group and say, hey, this is this is something we've investigated, this is what we found, this is what we think is going to be. And, and what it could be, um, it doesn't have to just be things we put on the wall, we've just heard something new from Jeff. Right. Or we could say, as a separate category over here, we're going to also throw up some quick wins that we've thought about through the gallery block or through up, that we want to also pursue. Mm -hmm. How does that sound? Okay. And the first one should be, um, like, they got four hits, which was confused career investigation and exploration into the middle school ELA curriculum. And Northside would like to change the wording on that, which I think might be more palatable to say infused career guidance okay. and investigation. I mean, I, the, the idea of the, the continuous course sequence shouldn't hold anybody back. The idea is we want kids looking at careers sooner. Right. 
and, and we wanted this part of the curriculum. Yes, career guidance and, and, and yeah. exploration and exploration in middle school ELA curriculum. Right, right. It, it shouldn't be something that's done at lunchtime in the GO centers. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, there was one other top four, right? Let's get one. Okay, are there other strategies that you'd like to throw up on this list? I think, I think what Roseanne said about investigating the the matrix college career readiness matrix looking at maybe not the whole district but pilot schools the dashboard that you were talking about yes. yesterday mm -hmm. to come up with a profile the matrix would be the profile guide but the profile would be the way to the profile yes yes Yes. But I think that also complements the work that Jeff is talking about. Yes, it does. And the single is one of all those to be the common calendar. Yes, right. The developing common testing calendar. Well, I don't know, maybe when you put together a school board, they might not be easy. But that all sits already for, I mean, today's testing, yeah, I guess I'm trying to think of, when you say common testing, And with 50,000 secondary students, that is not something I'm comfortable implementing. I am certainly willing to continue to investigate it with you all. So Maybe so. Yeah. Is no. our secondary college board person here in this? Yes. <laughs> is this an opportunity Sorry, to talk to the legislature? <laughs> <laughs> well, it is a cost item. In order to do it during the school day, it is a huge cost item. Good for urban. Right, and they were able to get the There is no current legislation for that. I'm not yeah. willing yeah, to got, jump out and say it's a, it's a monetary. Yeah, I think it's a conversation. I'm not the best So you guys, remember the yeah. menu of strategies? It doesn't mean that, like, like Dennis and said, it doesn't mean all of you will necessarily do them. They're going to investigate. They're going to keep helping the rest of us do it, learning from it. But it doesn't mean that all of us have to do all those six strategies. Yeah. But when we reconvene, we'll talk yeah, about yeah, yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> I'm going back to number one. I'm being a devil's advocate over here because of my elementary people over there. Your goal here is college and career ready culture, but you've left out elementary schools. And so number one, in my mind, should be infused career guidance. Totally agree with it. But the exploration part can include elementary school too. So in my mind, um, we instead of saying we could use infused career guidance in the middle school and exploration beginning in elementary, or we just say across all curriculum. So because we've just eliminated by just starting out, you're just saying right there, let's just start in middle school, and it's kind of left out the culture in the elementary school too. And that's what we're trying to begin is back in our elementary schools. So when they get to middle school and high school, they are familiar with it already. So that way we're not reteaching or first teaching it in the middle school or high school, yeah. they're familiar with they it. They were just saying the same thing, and it's a great thing, but I want to let Norse explain right. why they identify. Well, the reason, and it doesn't take much explanation, you're exactly right. Yeah, the infusion needs to occur mm -hmm. earlier. We're talking, we're not talking about counselors going into classrooms and okay. go centers. Yeah. We're talking about looking at our curriculum yeah. and infusing yeah. in yes. the curriculum yeah. these career exploration opportunities. Okay. 
And you're exactly right. It should okay. stop start sooner. And we chose yes. and we chose the so, so, so we get a hundred yes. 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 and, and being responsive to the because I've been reading through what you gave me from the gallery no, walk. No, we are like across overwhelmingly you all want more of doing more in elementary and middle schools. Yes. Because I've been reading through those cards you gave me. Yes. So overwhelmingly, all of you want a lot more in elementary and middle school programming and career and everything, less than the SAT, ACT so. okay, Jean, just FYI, that whole strategy goal and thing as it's developed fits so nicely with the SA 2020. 50% of the adults in San Antonio will have a two or four year degree. And I think we're going to add certificates. So, yeah. Yes. In an honors essay, we're ready to work with essay, we're ready. Yes. Okay. How do you feel about this? Um, you can read it. Uh, you want to you want to five? Do you want to read it? <laughs> so, got it up there. almost got it. Up there. Oh, you got it. Awesome. So I'll get out of the way. Um, so so it, so as I understand it, we all agree on the goal. We agree on the metric, and we'll start looking at how we sort of move towards that essay 20 over time, right? Because we know it's going to take a long time to get necessarily there. Um, some, but we're going to, this is a menu of strategies, and we're going to, 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 we can I um, can we put instead of teachers and administrators put the school staff? You have lots of you have a lot of paraprofessionals <coughs> working key centers and areas, and you know the kids will walk into the secretaries in the main office asking all kinds of questions. If, if, if it's going to be a culture, it's going to be a whole staff. If you do, I would I would support that adding staff, but not replacing teachers and administrators. Correct. Correct. Because frequently administrators check out of that, leave that up to uh, the content coordinators. And so, and other staff maybe. Yeah. And goal number three, would you change investigating to investigate so it's consistent with all the others? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I have a question at number one. So number one says across the K-12. Did we want to be intentional about saying core content areas P K twelve? So it's not just a, yes. an add on, it's actually in the content areas? Yes. It's not an elective. I just I have a concern about about putting it just in four areas. I mean, kids are exposed to art, music, uh, in elementary. Those are usually the basic foundation uh, electives. They should be able to see in those classes how those electives could possibly give them a career that they may like later in the mm -hmm. future. And they can. But you know what we were trying to do with that is to make sure that we reached 100% of the students. Yeah. We're they currently doing that on. in electives across uh, the district now, but we're only hitting a small percentage of the students because there's only a small percentage in the fine arts and career tech at those levels. So that was that was the idea behind it. Um, putting it in ELA logos, in our case. Okay, time's up. Yeah, no space and yes, because of the press conference, we got to stay on the So, uh, on those surveys we gave you, if we asked you when you wanted to get together, so. <laughs> Answer that because that's how we're going to go back and, and, and do the follow up.
presentation so uh, you're going to exit that door and the lunch has been set up in the hallway pick it up and come back this way 